Olive oil has all but replaced butter for our bread on restaurant tables, so it was just a matter of time before it took over our cakes, too. Well, here in America, butter cakes are very common. Mediterranean olive-rich regions, well, they use olive oil. So Dan is here to show us an amazing recipe for olive oil cake. So Bridget, when we swap in olive oil for butter, it's not just a flavor change. We want a little bit of that olive oil flavor. Mm -hmm. It's gonna taste really nice, that kind of sweet, savory thing going on, but it really affects texture. And so we're gonna work on a couple of ways to get really good leavening in here. So I have one and three quarter cups of all-purpose flour, and I'm gonna add a full teaspoon of baking powder. Baking powder is a really great leavener because most of the stuff you buy is double acting. So it acts, when we first get it wet, it starts to produce carbon dioxide, mm -hmm. and then when it goes into the heat of the oven, it produces even more. So it's a really, really strong chemical leavener. We also have three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. Did I mention that this cake is simple to put together? I'm more of a cook than a baker, and I feel like this is a great cook's dessert. Excellent. Yep. And then we'll get to our wet ingredients. When we have butter in a cake recipe, oftentimes we cream it. Mm -hmm. You can't do that with olive no, oil. No, you cannot. No, you can't cream it. So we're gonna come up with another way to get some good air in there, and that's gonna start with three eggs. We tried whipping the egg whites, which you see in a lot of classic cakes. It just wasn't strong enough to stand up to the amount of olive oil mm. that we put in the cake. So we wanted something a little more sturdy, so we're gonna whip these whole eggs just until they're frothy, about a minute on medium. Okay, so it's foamy right now. I have one and a quarter cups of granulated sugar and a quarter of a teaspoon of lemon zest. We're keeping the flavor profile really clean here because we want that extra virgin olive oil to really shine through. Okay. But a little bit of lemon zest goes a long way. It's sure. nice. I'm gonna beat this on high speed for about three minutes. We're looking for that really beautiful, pale, kind mm. of ribbony texture, and that means we have a lot of air bubbles in there. All right, you can see how it's nice and foamy at this point. Very creamy. It's probably tripled or quadrupled in volume, so mm -hmm. we have a ton of air pockets in there that will fill with the CO2 once we get it in the oven. Now it is time to get in our olive oil. You actually want to use really good quality extra virgin olive oil for this because we want a lot of flavor to come from it, mm. right? So we could make this cake with vegetable oil, it'd be nice and moist, it'd be sure. fine. It would just taste like sugar and eggs. We right. want this to really come through. So you wanna use a good one that has a little bit of pepperiness to it, a little bit of spice. There's a little counterintuitive because it's going into a cake, but sure. you, you want it to stand up. Okay, beautiful. So once it was all in, mix a little bit longer just to make sure you don't see any streaks of oil. So I'm adding half of our flour, baking powder, and salt mixture. And I'm gonna mix on low speed. We're gonna do everything on low speed from here on out just to be as kind of as gentle as mm -hmm. possible. It's gonna depend on your machine and your whisk, but a lot of times it can't grab all of the flour. So it's a good idea to stop every now and then and scrape it down. Make sure you're getting all that flour incorporated. So that's in there. I'm gonna add in the rest of our liquid ingredients. So I have three quarters of a cup of milk. Now we want just regular whole milk here. You're not using half and half or mm -hmm. cream. We don't want it to be too fatty. We're getting all of our fat from that extra virgin olive oil. True. I'm gonna go in with the rest of our flour mixture. And again, mix on low speed. Okay, I'm gonna stop it right there. It's just incorporated. There's maybe a couple little lumps. Too much mixing would have made it possibly too tough of a cake. Potentially. So I have a greased springform pan here. Springform is really nice for this cake for a couple of reasons. One, it has very high sides, and we're looking for something that kind of rises up and looks pretty dramatic. We've done a lot to get air in here, mm -hmm. and we want that to show through. It also means we can put a nice crust on the top of this and then not have to worry about flipping it out of a cake pan. So the springform is perfect here. So I'm just gonna pour this in. And then the final touch here is two tablespoons of granulated sugar. We're just gonna put this over the top. It's not gonna look like anything until we pull it out of the oven, and then it looks really cool. We have a 350 degree oven on the middle rack. It's gonna take 40 to 45 minutes until a toothpick comes out. Just a few crumbs attached. All right, are you ready? Smells so mm, good. Smells so good. Uh, there's something going on there that we've gotta talk about, I think. Yes, it's got a very <laughs> cool little hat on top. So this has been in there for 45 minutes, and I'm gonna check the doneness. We're gonna use our little toothpick here. So I'm just gonna go on the side. This looks great. There's just a couple little crumbs attached. It feels dry. This guy is definitely done. Okay. So yes, this is that nice little sugar mm. sprinkle that I put on the top there. It does this really cool thing where it almost acts like a meringue and it puffs up on top. It's gonna provide a nice textural contrast when we go to eat it, but we can't do that yet. We actually have to wait a little bit. Okay. So it's been 15 minutes and it's time to get it out of our springform pan. You wanna look around and make sure that the cake is separated from the sides. If you have an older pan, it might stick to the sides a little bit and you just wanna run a knife around the outside okay. there. But this looks great, totally separated. So now we're gonna use the great functionality of a springform pan and just flip this little lap it's gonna expand it just enough. It's gonna make it a lot easier to pull it right off. Oh, beautiful. So I'm just running a knife around here just to make sure that we're fully separated on the bottom. I'm just gonna slide it the rest of the way off, right, onto our wire rack. So this needs 90 minutes to cool down the rest of the way and then we'll transfer it to our board and it's time to eat. It's finally cooled. Another 90 minutes, you've been very patient. 
I've been sitting here watching <laughs> this. And look, the top is beautiful. It's actually settled a little bit, but it still has some separation. Oof, you see the inside of that too, it's beautiful. The crumb on this cake might be the most even crumb I've ever seen. A nice little wedge would be perfect. I can do that. So you can see we don't have anything else with this. It's really about the extra virgin olive oil in there, that great flavor, great texture. Mm. It's almost fruity. Mm -hmm. It has a really fruity flavor to it. It's beautiful and it's soft and it's tender. I love that crackly crisp top. That funny little hat turns out to oh. be an important part, huh? It's your hat trick. Great job, Dan. Thank you. Our olive oil cake batter gets lift from baking powder as well as beaten whole eggs. Beat in sugar, lemon zest, and good quality extra virgin olive oil. Scrape the batter into a springform pan and bake until deep golden brown. So from our test kitchen to your kitchen, a dessert game changer, olive oil cake. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.